Hi, today we're going to learn about ACLS algorithm. Under this topic, we're going to learn about cardiac arrest and also arrhythmia. In cardiac arrest, there is no presence of pulse. So when we feel for the carotid artery, there is no pulse. So the patient is having a cardiac arrest. Under arrhythmia, we have tachyarrhythmia and also bradyarrhythmia. In this situation, the patient has pulse. If the patient does not have pulse and the rhythm shows that the patient is having arrhythmia, we still treat the patient following cardiac arrest algorithm. For cardiac arrest, it is very important to identify these two rhythms, ventricular fibrillation and also ventricular tachycardia. So in this case, it is pulseless ventricular tachycardia. So the treatment for this is defibrillation. So we need to defib this patient. Other than that, we also give patient CPR or chest compression, oxygen, adrenaline, and also a medaron. If the patient has any other rhythm other than ventricular fibrillation or pulseless ventricular tachycardia, we treat the patient as having non-shockable rhythm. Under this non-shockable rhythm, we have AC stall and pulseless electrical activity. Pulseless electrical activity or PEA is any rhythm in cardiac arrest other than PT, we have an AC stall. So even if the rhythm shows sinus rhythm, bradycardia, supraventricular tachycardia or whatever rhythm, but if the patient is pulseless, then it is PEA. The treatment is mainly CPR, oxygen, and adrenaline. This is a pulseless arrest algorithm based on AHA guideline. So if the patient has no response, no pulse, this is a pulseless arrest. So immediately perform CPR on the patient, while another rescuer get an AED or defibrillator stat, give oxygen to patient, and once rhythm is available, decide whether this is a shockable or a non-shockable rhythm. If it is a shockable rhythm, give defib to patient and then continue with high quality CPR. If the rhythm shows a non-shockable rhythm, continue with high quality CPR. If the rhythm is a shockable rhythm, give defibrillation to patient, then continue with CPR for 2 minutes. Then check for pulse and rhythm again. If the patient has no pulse and the rhythm is still a shockable rhythm, give another defibrillation and immediately resume CPR. Once IV assess is available, IV adrenaline 1 mg can be given every 3 to 5 minutes. After 2 minutes of CPR, check for pulse and rhythm again. If another shock is given this time, start the patient on IV amedaron 300 mg IV bolus. Repeat the cycle. IV amedaron can be given as bolus 2 times. The second IV bolus is 150 mg. If the rhythm becomes a non-shockable rhythm, go to non-shockable rhythm algorithm. If the patient regain return of spontaneous circulation, go to post resus care. If the rhythm is a non-shockable rhythm, continue with high-quality CPR. Give adrenaline IV or IO every 3 to 5 minutes. Check pulse and rhythm every 2 minutes. At the same time, we also have to treat the reversible cause of pulseless arrest. These are the reversible causes of cardiac arrest that should be looked for. They are also known as 5H and 5Ts. This is a summary on the cardiac arrest algorithm. If the patient has no pulse, we have to determine whether this is a shockable or a non-shockable rhythm. If the patient has a shockable rhythm, give defib. Now we go to tachyarrhythmia. In adult, we use a normal heart rate of 60 to 100. So anything more than 100 is considered as tachycardic. In tachyarrhythmias, the most important thing is to determine whether this is a stable or an unstable tachyarrhythmias. In unstable tachyarrhythmias, we look for sign of shock or sign of inadequate tissue perfusion. So we start from the top. We look for sign of altered mental state because of reduced perfusion to the brain. And then we also ask for symptoms of chest pain, angina chest pain because of reduced blood flow to the heart. We also 
examined for bibacillus Krebs. We ask at the lung to look for bibacillus Krebs, which is sign of heart failure. And then we also monitor the blood pressure to look for hypotension. And then we look at the peripheries to look for sign of shock, such as reduced capillary filling and also cold clammy peripheries. If the patient is having shock due to arrhythmia, then we say that this patient is having an unstable tachyarrhythmia. The treatment for unstable tachyarrhythmia is synchronized cardioversion. So we give patient electrical therapy. Tachyarrhythmia can be divided based on clinical ECG and its origin. Other than stable versus unstable, we also have to see whether it is narrow or wide complex, and also whether it has a regular or an irregular rhythm. We also have to determine whether it is a supraventricular or ventricular in origin. There is another lecture on ECG rhythm interpretation for this. If there is arrhythmia with pulse, look for signs associated with inadequate tissue perfusion and decide whether this is a stable or an unstable rhythm. If there is sign of inadequate tissue perfusion due to arrhythmia, treat with synchronized cardioversion for unstable arrhythmia. The initial dose for synchronized cardioversion is as stated here. So you can see, for narrow regular rhythm, we usually start with 50 to 100 Joule. So we can see that SVT needs lesser energy level for synchronized cardioversion as compared to the other arrhythmias. So that is why I love to say that SVT is a less stubborn or easier to manage as compared to the others. Now we go to another rhythm which is also regular but it is white. In this case, it is ventricular tachycardia. In VT, we start with 100 Joule. There is another condition in which the rhythm is regular and white, but it is not VT. This is SVT with aberrancy. In SVT with aberrancy, we do not start with 100 Joule, but instead we start with the same dose as in other SVTs, which is 50 to 100 Joule. Now we go to irregular rhythm. Once it becomes irregular, the arrhythmia is more difficult to manage, or I would say more stubborn. So in atrial fibrillation, we use a higher energy level. We start with 120 to 200 Joule for biphasic machine or 200 Joule for monophasic machine. In white irregular rhythm, which is polymorphic VT, we no longer give synchronized cardioversion. We defibrillate the rhythm, meaning that we no longer press the synchronized button on the machine. However, there is also another white irregular rhythm which is atrial fibrillation with aberrancy or pre-excitation AF. In this situation, we treat the patient as in AF. Another thing to remember is that in ventricular tachycardia, make sure you check the pulse. If there is no pulse, treat with defibrillation. If there is pulse, then the patient is unstable. Give synchronized cardioversion. Now we go to stable tachyarrhythmia. Even though the patient is stable, we still need to treat before the patient develops complications such as heart failure and shock. Our aims are rhythm control, rate control, and prevention of thromboembolic event in atrial fibrillation. This is the adult tachycardia with pulse algorithm based on AHA guideline. So number one, Assess the appropriateness for clinical condition. And number two, identify and treat underlying cause. Secure the patient's airway, breathing, and circulation. Make sure we monitor the patient's vital sign. If the persistent tachycardia is causing sign of shock, we need to give patients synchronized cardioversion. If the patient is stable and the QRS complex is white, we need to consider antiarrhythmic infusion. If the patient is having narrow regular rhythm or supraventricular tachycardia, we can perform first of a maneuver if there is no contraindication. We can do so by giving carotid massage or asking the patient to perform first of a maneuver. We can ask the patient to do this by forcefully try to blow through a closed airway. We can do this by asking the patient to blow through a, the tip of a 10cc shrink. If the non-pharmacological treatment does not work, we can give adenosine for supraventricular tachycardia. If the patient is having narrow, irregular rhythm or atrial fibrillation, we need to consider anticoagulant. If the patient is high risk for thromboembolic event, 
and also antiarrhythmias such as beta blocker, calcium channel blocker, amedron, and digoxin. Here is some of the drugs used in ACLS. There is also another lecture on ACLS drug therapy. However, sinus tachycardia is not considered as tachyarrhythmias. So if the patient is having sinus tachycardia with hypotension, we do not give patients synchronized cardioversion. We look for the cause of sinus tachycardia and hypotension in that patient and treat the patient according to the cause. Now we go to bradycardia. In adult, usually we use a heart rate of less than 60 to be bradycardic. If the patient is bradycardic, it is important to determine whether this is symptomatic or an asymptomatic bradycardia. If the patient is having sinus bradycardia and the patient is asymptomatic, usually there is no immediate treatment needed. However, we may need to investigate the patient further. If the patient is having bradycardia and symptomatic, we need to treat the patient. The patient may complain of giddiness, syncopal attack, or other signs of shock. So in this patient, we need to treat. In patients with symptomatic bradycardia, the first line treatment is atropine. We can give IV atropine 0.5 mg bolus and repeat it every 3 to 5 minutes to a maximum of 3 mg. If atropine does not work, we can consider dopamine infusion, adrenaline infusion, or transcutaneous pacing. We can give dopamine infusion at a rate of 2 to 10 mic per kilo per minute, where adrenaline is given at 2 to 10 mic per minute. We can learn on transcutaneous pacing in another lecture on ACLS electrical therapy. This is the summary of what we have learned today. Thank you for your attention and happy learning!